Hello, my name is Paul Marquis and I'm a physical therapist. The reason I am here today is to give you some guidance regarding how to care for yourself after low back surgery. Your doctor's office will give you a comprehensive packet of information that you should make sure you read before surgery. Now this video was made to help reinforce the do's and don'ts after low back surgery and do some actual demonstrations so that you can increase your chance of having optimal recovery after your back surgery. This video will relate to most low back surgeries, but on occasion, if you have a complicated surgery, your physician may give you different directions on what to do afterwards. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I want to do is talk about your trip home after your surgery. So after you've been cleared from the hospital or your surgical center, um, you should know a couple things about your trip back home. Number one, if you live really far from home, especially if you're over an hour away, it's important that you get out of your vehicle frequently just to walk around and loosen up so your back doesn't stiffen too much. Walking around also helps to decrease your risk of having blood clots. So that is very important that you do. Now, if you, um, when you get into your vehicle, it's very important you remember a couple of things. After you open your door, it's important that you try to bring your seat back as far as you can. So if it's automatic like this, you just bend your knees, pull the button, and have the seat go back as far as possible. Now some people have to do it from the front of the seat here. So it's try to keep your knees bent, pull up on the handle, and slide the seat back. It's important that you try to get some help to do that if you can't do it yourself. Now when you go to sit into your seat, back yourself up to the seat and bend your knees to get onto it. Then use your hands and slowly slide yourself back into the seat and turn your legs in as you turn your back in. Okay, that is very important. When you travel, try to keep your knees in a bent position. Some people straighten their legs out too much and become sore and that irritates the nerves that go up your back. So try to keep them bent periodically and move them as much as you want. It's also important that you try to pump the ankles up and down like this. That helps to prevent blood clots from developing into the lower part of your leg. And I also like to have people recline the seat back so that you're tilted. Now you're not going to see me very well while I'm in this position, but that can help significantly take pressure off of your back while you are traveling. Now when you Take that break every hour or so when you're going back or when you arrive home. Getting out is very important. Try to sit up straight and bring your legs out as the same, at the same time that you turn your back. So what you want to do is you want to try to step right out straight ahead like this. And you're not going to be able to avoid twisting completely, but if you can decrease it a little bit, it will be a lot safer. So there you have it. You're home safe and sound. Now that you are home, let's talk a little bit about your incision. Most incisions are now closed with a special glue so that you don't need stitches or staples. The glue will peel off on its own over the course of a couple of weeks. It is not uncommon to have a little redness, swelling, or pain around the incision for the first couple of days. Don't worry about that. It is very important that you have a family member or a friend take a look at your incision periodically to make sure that you are not developing an increase in redness, swelling, or even some drainage at the incision. If you develop a fever of 101 Fahrenheit or higher at any time after your surgery, you should call your doctor's office. It's, although it is very rare, it could be the sign of an infection. Make sure you keep your incision clean and don't sit in a hot tub, a pool, or a bathtub. And if your incision does get wet, make sure that you blot it dry and don't wipe it really hard because that can take some of the glue off early. I'd like to talk next a little bit about icing. Now using ice can help to control your pain at the surgical site. And it is very important that you don't take ice and put it directly on the incision. You need to remember that that incision is trying to heal and is not completely closed. And using a commercial ice pack could cause frostbite. So if you are using a flexible commercial ice pack like this, make sure that you put it in a towel and or a pillowcase 
to help protect it between the ice pack and your skin. I like to ice while sitting so that it puts a little pressure on the area of the incision and that pressure can help decrease swelling. What you do is you put the ice pack over the incision, place your bottom as far back in the chair as possible and lean back into the ice pack. That will give some pressure to the incision and should definitely make you feel better. I'd like to talk next about how to get into bed and what position is safest to lie in. Now it is safe to lie on your side or on your back, but it is not a good idea to lay on your stomach, especially after surgery. So the way you should approach your bed is to get the bed squared off behind your legs, put your hands on the bed and slide yourself back on. It's always good to have some extra pillows because if you can put an extra pillow between your legs, that will help to take some pressure off of your back. Now in order to lie down on your side, you should put your elbow down on the table and use this hand over here while you are lifting your legs at the same time, just like this. Have a pillow that is, keeps your head at a nice level position and place the pillow between your legs so that your spine is in a nice comfortable position here also. Now this is the best position to lie in while you're sleeping. But if you are a back sleeper and you like to lay on your back, that is fine also. Just take the pillow and place it underneath your legs and roll your body and legs together at one time and place the pillow underneath your legs. This will take a little tension off of your spine and make you much more comfortable. Now when getting back up out of bed, it's important that you roll onto your side first, place the hand on the bed, and try to work your way up with your elbow while your legs come off of the bed. That will help protect your spine when you are moving and transitioning around in your bed and should make you much more comfortable during the recovery. People often mention to me the difficulty of putting on a shoe or a sock after lumbar spine surgery. So what I'm going to do now is demonstrate how to do that appropriately. Now contrary to popular belief, you should not sit down and bend over to do that activity. That actually puts a significant amount of pressure on your spine. So if you can sit in a chair and bring your leg up to you, that's probably going to be the best way to do it because then you can maintain a relatively straight spine while doing it. You take your sock off and put it on pretty much the same way and trying to avoid too much bending at your spine. Now, when it comes time to putting your shoe on, you should get up out of your chair, get your shoe, and then come back to the sitting position. Then what you do is make sure that your shoe is wide open, unlace it really well. You're gonna put that ankle over the knee again, pull your shoe on, and tie it in this position here. If you are incapable of doing that because your hip doesn't move well enough or maybe you've had a knee injury, you may want to consider some elastic laces on your shoes so that you can just slip your feet in or get a high quality slip on shoe that would not fall off of your foot really easily. That could make life a lot easier after surgery in regards to putting on your shoes and taking them off frequently. Next, I'd like to talk about sitting, standing, and walking. Now, it is important when you are sitting that you keep your bottom as far back in the chair as possible so that when you sit back, your spine is in a nice straight position. Now, it is not a good idea to slouch like this or even if you have your bottom back there to lean forward and slouch like this. You want to try to keep your spine nice and straight while you're sitting. Now, when getting up out of a chair, this is very important. A lot of people tend to do this by habit. Bend forward and push up like this. And that puts a lot of tension on the back, especially right after surgery. So the way I recommend doing this is to scoot yourself ahead in the chair, stagger your legs so that your strongest leg is below you, and then keep your spine straight and use your hands and push yourself up into a standing position. 
and that will take a significant amount of pressure off your back while you are getting up. Now standing is okay and like I tell most patients, sitting, standing or walking too much can cause you problems so do everything in moderation. When standing, it is important that you don't spend a lot of time in this slightly forward bent position and whenever you lift, it is important that you don't keep your legs straight. And we'll be doing a little talk on how to lift uh, appropriately in just a little bit. Now walking is very important. The reason walking is important is number one, it is very safe to do. And number two, it helps to bring blood flow to your spine. And it is important that you try to loosen up your spine a little bit when you're walking and allow your arms to swing back and forth. So try to relax your back and walk. It is important that you walk frequently on level surfaces throughout the day, but only for short bouts. Don't go out for a very long walk because that will fatigue you too much and you may have a hard time getting back home um, if you do walk away from the house. Now lastly, one of the questions I get most often is how am I supposed to lift and how much can I lift? It is important that you go by your physician's instructions on how much weight you can lift for certain time frames. But if you do need to lift an object, I want to teach you how to do it appropriately. So it is important that when you are lifting that your feet are in the direction of the object that you are lifting. So I shouldn't be facing this way with my feet and bending over and twisting like this. That would be a bad position to get into. So you want to make sure that your feet are directed at the object that you're going to be lifting. It's important that you lift with the weight as close to your body as possible. That takes a lot of pressure off of your spine. Okay. It's also important that you lift with your legs as much as possible. And if you have a hard time using your legs, try to use an object that is close to you. So I'm going to demonstrate lifting this five pound case up off the floor. And basically I'm going to look at the object. I'm going to put my feet in the direction that I'm lifting. And in this case, I'm going to stagger my legs, keep my back relatively straight, put a hand on the chair. And if you don't have a chair or an object next to you, you can always put your hand on your knee. Now I always like to make sure that you look up, before you stand because that helps to set the muscles in your back to help you lift a little bit better and it takes tension off of your spine. So then you would go ahead and lift and keep that object close to you. Try to avoid lifting objects that are really high because that puts a lot of tension on your spine and try not to hold objects away from you because that significantly increases the tension on your spine. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it educational and I wish you the best of luck recovering from your lumbar spine surgery. Take care. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure you give us a thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe to our channel so that you get the content when we put it out. I wish you the best in your recovery and take care.